Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to design and laser cut this magnetic frame that's also a chalkboard. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And for years now, the artwork on the walls of my game room have been these magnetic pictures. Now what I would do is I would uh, have pictures made of the game I was currently playing, and then when I moved on to a new game, like from Mass Effect to Witcher 3, I'd just switch out the artwork. So I always had my current game up on the wall for inspiration. Now I bought these frames and had the pictures made at art.com, but they stopped providing these. So I said, hey, I can do that. So that's the inspiration for this project. So here's a few key points about this project that was designed in Adobe Illustrator. The image was done in Photoshop, and I cut it on a laser cutter. First of all, there are a lot of places on the internet where you can get these large magnets printed. Uh, I had this one done by Vistaprint for about $45. They're available because people use these to put them on the side of cars as advertising. So um, there's a lot of different suppliers for that. I needed to make my wooden frame magnetic. I could have put metal behind it, but instead I learned all about magnetic primers, and that's what I used. And then because it's just painted, I was able to paint chalkboard paint over it and turn it into a chalkboard so that if a picture isn't on it, it's still useful. And finally, I could have made the frame plain, but I decided to put some of my favorite quotations around it that talk about how playing is good for us, because I believe it is. So I'll talk about all of these things in this episode. The illustrator drawing is very simple. I have this outside rectangle that I also use to cut the backing. The inside rectangle has curved corners like the magnet, and it's a half inch bigger in both dimensions, so I have some wiggle room on putting the magnet in. And then I entered this path and I used the type on a path tool to put in my quotes. I created my collage in Photoshop and you want to make sure that your image is high enough resolution to look good on the magnet. So one way to do that is you put in the dimensions in inches, uh, the 24 by 18, make sure it's at least 150 dots per inch and it creates the document for you. Photoshop's going to translate that into pixel dimensions. And just keep in mind then you're talking about at least 3500 by 2600 resolution. Any modern camera, even the one on your phone, is going to give you that resolution. But I was using high definition screenshots from my Xbox One. And I just dragged one of those in to show you. And it really only fills in about a quarter of the image. So I used five different uh, screenshots here to create this collage. I put each one on its own layer in the image. And you can move them around, you can expand them a little bit, you don't want to make them much bigger because then you'll get into a resolution problem again. But you can make them a little bit larger without causing much of a problem. And then the question is how do you meld them together into a single image? You could use the eraser tool to erase the overlap, but this is what's considered destructive editing. Once you've done that, moved on to the next step, that's gone. And if you want to recover it, you'd have to go back in history and lose all the work in between. A safer approach is to put a layer mask over any given image in the larger image. And as long as you have a solid black brush, when you run it along the image, you get the same effect as erasing, but it's totally recoverable. It's putting that eraser mark onto the layer mask and you can go work on a second image and erase stuff out of that. And when you click back on the layer mask, you can continue editing without any loss. Here's the actual magnet. They all have these curved corners because they're less likely to tear in the application of putting them on the side of the car. So they're also much heavier than the ones that I got from art.com. I engrave through masking tape to protect the wood from smoke damage. And here's how the magnet fits in with that little gap all the way around. That won't really show when I've got black painted behind it. Of course, I have to peel off the masking tape. After some light sanding, I use Wipe-On Poly to finish the frame, the engraved frame. And I did a lot of research before selecting Magna Magic as my magnetic primer because not all magnetic primers are created equal. This by far had the best reviews. Magna Magic is strong enough to work through any good chalkboard paint. I used Valspar, 
and it's patented. The chalkboard paint works great for being a chalkboard, doesn't pick up magnets though, but here is the magnetic paint and primer and it will pick up these magnets. And especially a large magnet like the picture, it works great. I used a good wood glue and some clamps to do the final assembly and that's all there is to make it. I used magnetic art for my game room, but obviously you can use it anywhere where you want to be able to swap out the pictures on a regular basis without rehanging pictures or getting new frames. This illustrator drawing will be available on graylightmay.com and if you like making things for gaming and gamers, please subscribe to my channel.